Good evening. I'm recording this little supplement video for the 115 online class as promised. Um, to, and this, I'm going to try to keep this video very short and uh, constrained. But I wanted to set up everything that we're going to be doing over the next two units of the of the course curriculum, and also give you some guidance about the writing assignment. So um, the as as I talked about in the last video. Leading up to the first exam, I'm, I've got this writing assignment for you to do that's going to give you really good practice at uh, preparing you for the things that the exam is going to ask for. And, and as I mentioned before, the homework exercises in the book just don't quite cut it for this. So, um, so I want to give you this assignment to kind of fill in that gap in the in the material that the book has. Um, and it also will serve as a roadmap for everything that's going on. So the intentions for this assignment is actually something that you'll kind of do step by step. You can see on the screen here, I've got a, a little diagram of the four steps of this assignment um, that you'll kind of, you can do them sequentially. I, I actually encourage you not to save it all for the last minute and do it all at once, but actually to do it step by step as we go through the material. Uh, in fact, actually, I should mark this. Um, so step um, one here will well, I'll just I'll do this as we go with it. Um, I'll mark like at what step of the journey over the next week and a half um, you can do each of these steps. Uh, right now, you can do this first one. <laughs> right now, there you go. You can start that right now. Um, all you need to do here. Well, at, let's bring up this document first. So. Here's the here's the writing assignment instructions I sent out, um, and it says start by just composing a 500 word essay arguing for some position, any position you want, on any issue you like. I don't care as long as it's argumentative. That's the main thing that's going to be necessary for this assignment. Um, this advice request is just friendly, a friendly recommendation. Um, and not not a requirement, but I'm I'm like why why do it any other way? <laughs> I would encourage you to to write the essay about something that you care about. Um, I actually described a little bit in the last video about how to approach that and writing naturally and all that kind of stuff. So we've we've talked a little bit about step one, um, and that's just to to write this 500 word argumentative essay. But then after you have that. Uh, and again, don't belabor it. I'm not. Don't edit it other than for like grammar and spelling errors, or you know, just do a quick pass on that. Don't, don't have to be agonizing over this assignment. I'm not intending that. But after you got that, then print it out. And then this is where the fun begins. Uh, the fun. <laughs> this is where the material we're going to be working on for the next couple of units is going to come in. So this annotation uh, task, which on the writing guide here you can see, after you're done with this. Don't do this along the way. Just write the essay first. Go back over it, annotating your own argument in the style of exercise one on page 90. So you can take a look at that. That this is taken from the eighth edition of the book. Um, but as as you know, um, the homework um, the homework exercises I have given you as PDF scans so that we're all on the same page. So if you went to the chapter three homework. Um, Homework problems, homework exercises, exercise one from chapter three. That's what that one's about. Um, actually, let me see. I can just pull that up. One second. Okay, I'm back here. And actually, um, I should change those instructions a little bit. Um, so page 90, you won't have if you don't have the, the eighth edition of the book. Because um, I actually cut it from the homework assignment. Because I was, I was like, this is enough homework. I, I cut problems for students at some quarter in the past here. Um, but the the instructions here, um, this this right here, I've got uh, exercise three from chapter four. So ninety is in chap page ninety would be in chapter four here. But it's basically everything that you see in the instructions here. Uh, you have to look for these elements: reason markers, conclusion markers, assuring, discounting, guarding, positive evaluative terms, and negative evaluative terms. And I know if you haven't done the reading, you don't know what this is looking like, but that, that's what I'm going to talk about here in the video. Basically, <clears throat> what we're doing here in the, this is the, I'm going to put it here as after, oops, caps lock is still on. After chapter 3 slash 4, a little bit of 4, 
then you can do this annotation step. And what we're basically doing is, you remember from the chapter two lectures, I was talking about how there are these like speech and conversational acts that are part of the speech act of arguing and debate. And so tracking some of those uh, maneuvers or activities that are part of that broader activity, that broader language game, is what we're up to here. So that's what this assuring, guarding, discounting, argument markers, evaluative terms, they're all um, ways in which we're trying to be sensitive to these various speech and conversational acts that take place as part of debate. So what you'll be doing is listening for those speech acts and conversational acts, and then when you see them happening, you'll circle them and you'll kind of label them. Uh, so maybe here... You throw in, let's make this smaller. You throw in, uh, oh, even smaller than that. There you go. I'm trying to draw a little picture so you see a sense. So you might draw a circle around it and then say, this is an argument marker for a conclusion. And then maybe someplace else, you spot here this little phrase. Well, that is a guarding phrase. So you circle it and then put a a G for guarding. So you can see on the um, instructions document here that I've got the abbreviations listed for you. So um, you really, and I say you want to catch all of these. This is one way in which this assignment is different from the homework exercises because the homework exercises from the book point out a word or phrase and then ask you like, is this something? What is it? On the exam, it's not going to look like that. You're just going to get a passage of argumentative prose like you're composing for this paper, and you're going to be asked to pick these things out. So you'll need to be able to know how to listen for them, spot them. This is what it's like in the real world, right? In, in the real world, no one's going around being like, that phrase I just used, that's something, isn't it? What is it? Quiz? You know, they don't do that. So you'll have to be able to pick these things up to track them. Um, I highly recommend, uh, I recommended printing out the essay originally because the easiest way to do these annotations is to hand draw them. So have it double spaced and then just like take a pen or pencil and circle stuff and, and label it. If you must do it online, then I would uh, prefer you to do it the way you'll have to do it on the exam where it's like, well, let me type it up here for a little bit. Let's say you've got some blah, blah, blah. And then uh, afterward, you might mark it as, oh, this thing was, um, oops, I press the mouse, blah, blah, blah. And then you mark it as like, I don't know, discounting. So there you go. Then you got, you got some discounting. And then you would probably want to like underline this. Um, oops. So have a the part that you're going to put that parentheses afterward, like underline, use the underline feature from your word processor to mark the thing that then you're giving an annotation for. If you want to do it that way, totally cool with me. Um, the only thing I ask is please, and there's always a student who wants to do this every quarter, please don't use color-coded highlighters as a way to do it. It's very hard for me to review. Um, so I would appreciate not doing that um, and using these instead. Uh, but that would be the second step. And so after we get through, probably it, uh, the way I was sort of anticipating the way things will go next week, um, I'll be able to do a lot of chapter three and four on the Tuesday lecture, but I think a little bit will slip into the Thursday lecture too. So maybe after the Thursday lecture next week, then you'll uh, be able to do the exercises from chapter three and four, and then you can do this annotation step too. I actually recommend doing this annotation step after doing the 3-4 homework, because like I said, 3-4 homework's a little easier, right? It's pointing, it's a little bit more like training wheels. This will be like a, a better test of mastery. So you can pull this one out and do this step afterward to see how you're feeling after trying out the easier, um, more, more accessible homework exercises from the book. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. That's all of the chapter 3-4 material, is learning, uh, going back to the uh, instructions document here, learning what all these things are, these reason markers, conclusion markers, assuring, guarding, discounting, evaluative terms. Um, that's, that's really what we're going to be talking about the most. Uh, I'm also going to be giving some other lecture material that's not really about stuff for the exam, but we'll, we'll talk about um, what 
is an appropriate use of these techniques and what would be an inappropriate use of these techniques and what would be a bad abusive use of these techniques too. Um, so I'll talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly um, for, for many of these. Um, so that's the material we're going to be doing there. And then the final step here is arrange your argument in standard form and diagram the argument. And this is the stuff we'll be getting to in chapter 5. So I've also got some pictures here. So after you got the essay printed out and annotated, um, <clears throat> then you'll want to type up the argument into standard form. And I've shown you standard form, I think, briefly. I think we've talked about it briefly. Uh, and I was doing some gest gestures with it. But here's, here's a little picture of what a very simple standard form argument might look like. Um, standard form in short, standard form and a diagram, is what I'm calling extended argumentative reconstruction. And the basic idea of this is to, well, I'll use an analogy. It's like painting a portrait. So if I'm looking at your face and I've got my pen and pencil and I'm drawing a picture, the picture is not you. I'm not taking a photograph, right? Um, I'm drawing you, but I want the picture to look like you. I mean, if it's a good portrait, someone could look at my drawing and be like, oh, it's, it's you. It's that person, right? So I have to decide what are the really major things to capture. Like, I should probably draw your nose. If I didn't draw your nose, it might be hard to recognize it as being you. Um, but like, do I need to get that one hair that's like between your eyebrow and your scalp? You know, like maybe no, like there's certain details that are not as essential um, than others. Or there's like a little tiny birthmark here. And if I don't get that in the picture, it still might be recognizably you. What we're trying to do is, is reconstruct the argument. We're trying to give a portrait of the argumentative ideas that are in the essay. There's a lot of stuff in the essay that doesn't necessarily need to be captured into this portrait that we're, we're making here with the standard form and the diagram um, because it's not really argumentative content or it doesn't help so much or it could be clarified. It's kind of vague or it, there's, there's going to be a lot of artistic license that you're going to have in rephrasing things, in chopping them up, and reorganizing it to draw out the ideas that are behind the words in the essay. So this is not essay diagramming. This isn't something you would do for an English class. This is argument diagramming. And it goes back to this mantra I, I said I'd be repeating a lot in the coming units about how our job in this class as critical thinkers is that we're not really concerned about the language. We're not really concerned about the words. We're concerned about the meanings that the words are a vehicle for. And we have to be concerned with the words in as much as we're concerned about the meaning, of course. But our real goal is not analyzing the language. Well, our real goal is analyzing the, con the concepts, the logic of the ideas that the language is expressing. And that's why you're going to have this artistic license um, and be expected to use it, to exert it. So taken together, the standard form and the diagram paint the complete portrait. In fact, if you really wanted to run with this analogy that I'm making, um, I'd say the diagram is really the portrait, and the standard form tells you what the diagram means. So think about the diagram almost like a map with symbols, like these numbers, and the, the standard form is like the key that tells you what this symbol means. So I don't want to get too much into the lecture here because I'm trying to keep this video short. But what you can expect here, um, just in the short, you know, the early informal broad strokes here, these arrows in the diagram are connecting claims with each other in the way that arguments are claims connected by a support relation. So each arrow is the support relation that makes an argument what it is. So the, um, the numbers are all claims and the arrows are pointing at claims that are receiving support. And where they're coming from are the claims that are providing that support. So for example, in this diagram example that I provided, which is a very simple argument, your, your essay will have many more premises than this. Um, it'll be much more complicated with this in all likelihood. This is just for me to fit it on a whiteboard here. But what this diagram is saying is claim number two this claim right here, that standard form tells you what it is, is a premise to justify one as a conclusion. Sorry, I had to sneeze, so I got to pause the video. 
Um, it's also telling us that in addition to this argument where 2 is supporting 1, there's a second argument. Um, claims 3 and 4 taken together give me a reason to think that 1 is true. So 3 and 4 is an argument for 1. And then um, this arrow right here is saying that well, 4 is a claim that's helping provide support to justify 1, it's also a claim that receives support in another sub-argument with 5 as a premise. And you can also see these steps of inferences um, embodied in the standard form itself. <clears throat> Every time we have a conclusion that's being drawn from premises above it, we draw a line and then put this little triforce therefore symbol in front of the claim. So this is like saying 5 is true, therefore 4 is true. So 5 is true, therefore 4 is true. So 4 is true, that's being claimed. And then 3 is being claimed. And 2 is being claimed. And after all of that, you can then draw the inference that 1 is true. Now, one thing I do want to point out, even though it's early here, and I'm, I'm just giving the broad overview, you might already have some questions about what, what's happening. But one of the reasons why this diagram is so crucial is that standard form does not show where all the lines of support are, where they all exist. Um, so we, the diagram is kind of really showing the map about how the claims in standard form relate to each other. So um, you'll notice the standard form won't let me know that there's actually two arguments here instead of three or instead of one, where two is an independent argument from three and four taken together as an argument. Um, it also won't tell you that 3 and 4 are going together to support 1. So as you do standard form, you'll be doing the diagram side by side, especially if you use the technique I'll be teaching in my video lectures, which is different from the book. And I actually call it the backwards method. And one of its uh, defining characteristics is that you're doing the diagram at the same time as standard form. So um, that's how that's going to work. I recommend here... Uh, so actually sorry um, you won't be able to do these until um, you're done with so we'll go oops I still put caps lock on again after chapter 5 so both of these both of these two steps you'll want to do after chapter 5. Um, <clears throat> but standard form, I highly recommend that you type instead of doing it handwritten uh, because you'll oftentimes need to like slip in another claim in there. Um, the, the standard form will not read in the linear fashion that claims are showing up in the essay in all likelihood. Most of the time, essay structure and argumentative structure don't map onto each other. They're kind of all mixed up. Much more on that when I start lecturing on this. Um, but that's something to worry about. And um, and the diagram, I think, is easiest to hand draw. So the picture that's sort of coming into focus here, you might be wondering, Tim, um, you've got a lot of stuff here that is uh, hand-drawn or a, a physical printout or, or something like that. Um, but this is an online class. What's up? Well, actually, my advice would be that after you do all this stuff, take pictures of your hand-drawn um, elements like the annotated essay or the diagram that you draw um, and uh, upload those pictures as your as part of your submission which you should be able to do on canvas um, or you can you can always take those pictures and then make a PDF uh, document out of them if you're if you're tech savvy like that, if you're not tech savvy like that, you can just attach the the photos. If you're having trouble with Canvas, feel free to always just send them as attachments to my email, my timbcphilosophy at gmail com email, and that should be fine. Um, so I'll, I'll talk more about this stuff uh, after we get through these chapters too. But hopefully, this gives you a broad picture of where we're going. Um, basically, doing this annotation step, being able to put arguments into standard form and diagram them. That plus the linguistic or the linguistic analysis thing from chapter two, that's like the core of exam one. It's just all those techniques. Now the devil's in the details on this, and as I said earlier, there's a lot of 
judgment calls that you're going to have to make. It's not going to be a straightforward analysis. There's going to be plenty of, uh, like I said, artistic license that you'll exert and knowing when to do that and when not to do that, when to read a conversational implication into a situation and when not to. It's going to be tough, and I'll have a lot of advice for you in supporting you um, practicing and mastering those skills. Um, but it'll be some. It'll be risky. It won't be a straightforward deduction. Um, it, it's informal logic, not formal logic. Um, anything else I want to say here about the instructions? Oh, just as like a heads up about this stuff. Um, so, uh, I was going to say, um, in terms of grading this, there's a component that it. So most of the homework assignments, you just do them, you get credit for it. Here, uh, I'm, I do have this broken down for effort and skill, so, but I, I will tell you right now, uh, very clearly here, that the way I'm grading you for skill on this writing assignment is really easy, in the sense that um, my belief is that, or the way I've got my class structured, is that it's the exams that I'm testing your skill with. That, that's the main part of the class that's like, have you learned this? Um, have you mastered this ability? Have you mastered this skill? So I'm not think, I'm thinking the homework is like practice for that, right? Preparation for that. The reason I've put this in here is that I've had students not kind of get the message on taking this assignment seriously. But as long as you take it seriously, even if there's some errors, there's things I think you could have improved upon with your analysis or your reconstruction or whatever, the annotations, um, I'll be giving you credit for this, kind of without question. Um, only if I see uh, a really superficial treatment of your essay, um, like it, n not a, a very uh, robust version of reconstructing the argument or something like that, will there be, if I'm seeing that you're just phoning it in, then, then there'll be some points docked here. Um, but that that's about it. Um, there is... Uh, the the only way in which there'd be something I would take off here as far as the part of just making the essay, that's only a problem if there's less than 500 words. As long as you get 500 words, these two points are yours. If there's if it's 500 words and there's arguments in it, boom, you're going to get those points. Um, with the skill stuff, uh, like I said, as long as you're giving it a good effort, it should be fine. If you're worried about it, like let's say you're working on your essay and you're like, uh-oh, like, I don't have a lot going on here. Like, I don't have a lot of annotations. I don't have a lot of premises and conclusions. Um, Tim will think that I'm phoning it in. Just check with me. Just show me your work. You know, shoot it over to me. Be like, hey, does this look right? You know, Tim, uh, I, I, I really was looking and I couldn't find more things. Um, can I touch base with you about that? Am I missing something? And I can let you know about that. I mean, just don't, don't be shy. <laughs> That's an easy solution to that. Uh, anxiety. So um, let me know if you're in that kind of boat about it. The other thing that you might find is that you're like, I have a ton of stuff going on. Depending on how complicated your arguments are or how densely you write, 500 words is still pretty good space and you might have a lot going on there. So my advice is, here going back to this picture, um, I always have a couple students every quarter who like want to are tempted to turn in a standard form that has like 50 premises or something like that or I've had 70 before I'm like whoa you do not have that much argumentation going on or you're splitting hairs at a level that's no longer useful for analytical insight um, so my advice is if you're getting to the conclusion and then like two layers of argumentation so like a main argument layer and then a sub argument layer and you're at about 15 to 20 premises or claims in standard form, then you can call it quits. You've covered the main stuff. You've covered the the central thing is always the conclusion, and then the like the central primary arguments used to defend that conclusion, and then even one round of sub arguments. If you're at 15, 20 premises, that's good enough practice for this assignment. If you want to go whole hog on it and like do everything exhaustively and it's over 20, that's fine too. I don't have any problems with someone getting overly ambitious with this. But uh, if you're like, I think I've got good practice. I want to call it quits at 15 to 20 premises. That's fine with me. 
Again, if there's any questions or you're unsure about that, just check in with me. A quick check-in, you know, five-minute phone call or something, easy peasy. We can get you uh, feeling confident that you're, you're doing the right thing. But hopefully this video helps you with that too, um, so you can feel confident you know how to go about this assignment. So bottom line, this is a multi-stage assignment. Um, and you can do different things at different times. You don't have to wait until the very end to do it, and I don't recommend that. I'd encourage you, as soon as you have a moment, just barf out this 500-word argumentative essay. Do it informally. Write about something you care about. If it looks like a blog post, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, write naturally. Write however your voice just naturally comes out. How you, if you're just talking with someone, do that. So do that as soon as you can. And then after we get through the Chapter 3-4 material, probably on Thursday, and you've had a chance to try out the 3-4 homework, then do the annotation step. And then after we get done with Chapter 5 um, and doing the Chapter 5 homework, go after these um, standard form diagram bits. The earlier you can get this done, the, um, the more time we would have, potentially, to maybe have a phone call and review and look over and talk about what you did in your paper project to calibrate in preparation for exam one. If you're doing it last minute, we probably won't have the opportunity to do that. I will, I will not be, um, I, might, I might post some comments on this one. Um, I, I don't generally post comments on the homework because I send out the homework answers to kind of let you know what I'm thinking about the homework. And you can kind of compare it and then, like I was saying in the last video, contact me if you see anything goofy or post questions up on the discussion forums. Um, to, to get answers about that stuff. This one, there's no answers I can give out. So I will probably be trying to put um, at least some quick comments on these to let you know, like, how's it going? But especially if you turned in last minute before the exams, I won't have time to get your feedback in time for you to get it and then maybe talk about it with me before the exam. So earlier you can get this stuff done and check in with me, the better, I think, for you. But I'm absolutely willing to do that and talk more at length with you in sort of debriefing how this is going um, while you're doing it and after you're all done with it too. So let me know how I can help. Okay, I think we're going to cut off the video there. Uh, this gives you an idea of um, what we're going to be doing over the next couple weeks and how to go after this um, writing assignment one, um, which will be an ongoing project for that time period too. Okay, I hope you're having a good weekend and I'll see you again on Tuesday. Bye.